feel like I'm running around. <laughs> very, very good to have you here today. This is a special day, a day in which we honor those who have served, a day in which we lift them up, and uh, we encourage you to think about, uh, to question, to talk uh, to to them, and uh, some some great information that can be gleaned from those who are here. Um, who have served in some fashion or another. At some point today, we're going to call you forward. And uh, well, please, don't be so humble that you stay in your seat and uh, you don't uh, get recognized. We'd like you to come up and allow us to um, honor you with what you truly deserve. And uh, we'll, we'll take care of that here in, in a little while. I'll tell you what to do when the time comes for that. So let's go ahead and have our, um, our band come up. And uh, Michael, number 597, uh, Michael, would you lead us the Battle Hymn of the Republic, number 597. It's all standing.
couple of different things. First of all, we're going to put underneath on this clipboard, I'm going to send around one clipboard today. We're going to put underneath um, the uh, sign up for the mother daughter banquet if you'd like to attend that, um, which is next um, Saturday, 6 p.m. Okay, next, next Saturday, 6 p.m. Um, and uh, so here at the church downstairs. Um, so you, you plan on coming, please sign up. Even if you're new with us, we'd love for you to come. Even if you are by yourself and, and no one can come with you, your daughter or whatever, did you come? Uh, we, we have plenty of spare uh, children and, and grandparents and whatever you are, we've got one that will go with you, okay? Um, and besides, if you're a, a lady, you are uh, either a mother or a daughter or maybe both, okay? So you come and you celebrate with us. And gentlemen, um, you're welcome to come. You'll help us serve for a little while and uh, maybe cook if you come early enough. And uh, then we'll, we'll uh, go from there, okay? Um, so keep that in mind. We'll send that around. And then also, um, we're going to send around uh, on top of that uh, this little piece of paper for the ice cream soap. So since I forgot to send around a sign-up sheet last week, what we're actually going to do is send it around twice. The first time around, you're writing down what you already bought. You said, I'm doing this. Write it down. Then we'll send it around again once it comes over here to Mike. We'll send it around again. We'll make sure we stop everything and say we're sending it around a second time. So that if you say, okay, now that I know what everybody's bringing that's already signed up, I'm going to get something, then, then we'll do that. Since I failed to put out a sheet last week, you have to make up for it that way. Okay, so if you've already determined you're going to get something or you've already bought it, uh, write it down, and uh, then we'll send it around again so you get that straight. So let's send that one over here with Mr. Bear. Did you say mother, daughter, backward, was that six? Okay, yes. Yes. Okay. Let's see here. Then um, don't forget uh, this evening we have a abnormal service schedule. We're not going to have choir. We are going to have youth and Olympians meeting at six, and then at six thirty we're going to have an ice cream social. This is just a fellowship time. Um, you, you stand around and talk, you eat some ice cream, enjoy whatever everybody signs up for, and then may, maybe uh, we'll have some volleyball for kids available or some stuff like that, but, um, you know, just some, some fellowship time tonight, okay? So come prepared for that, and uh, come and share with us at 6.30 adults, uh, and uh, we, we look forward to you being here. That's this evening, okay? Wednesday night will be uh, normal times, uh, and then... Uh, you see the, the coming week. Now, um, I think I saw a sheet somewhere, and, and Amy, help me if I'm wrong. Don't we have a fair or two coming up this week? Yes. Yeah. Union Bridge. In Union Bridge this week, and, and Gamber? Gamber. Oh, I have to get the tape. Not right now. You can get them in a few minutes. You're kind of busy. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, we, we have a couple of carnivals coming up that we participate in heavily. We send some down to, to Gamber, we send some over to Union Bridge, so we'll make sure that, uh, I think they start today, but I'm not positive. Yes, Union Bridge starts tomorrow, okay, is that, is that what it is? Um, so, and, and Gamber's been open a couple of days now, they start like Friday or something. Um, so we have a, a week. Now, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, um, we participate with Agora Evangelism Ministries. Uh, we help to fill out their tent um, and to uh, be there as witnesses to win other people to Christ as they walk around the carnivals, the fairs, whatever you call them. Um, and so if you'd like to volunteer for that, we'll make sure there's a sheet in the back for you to write down your name and we'll pass it along appropriately when the time comes. And that's uh, this week as well. Okay, um, one other thing I'd make mention of uh, for you, on Monday, um, uh, many of your band members will be uh, marching in the uh, uh, Mortar Bay Parade in Westminster. If you'd be interested in um, uh, seeing, hearing, being a part of that, you've never gone to the Mortar Bay Parade, I would suggest you park near the college, and uh, then you, you make your way down to the corner of Pennsylvania and Maine. That's the best place to get. You'll look for Mr. Joe, he'll flag you down and tell you where, where he is, because that's where he'll be. He's always there. Um, and and uh, so, uh, you know, a corner there and a pretty nice spot to see. And uh, 
come out if you'd like to take part in the Memorial Day Parade. Let's see some of that there. Okay. And then let's see. We also have down here uh, the uh, Camp Tehiglo Work Workday um, on Saturday during the morning. Uh, Dolphin teens welcome. Uh, please let John and Judy know, and then the Mother Daughter Banquet is that evening. Uh, and uh, so please let John and Judy know about that. And then on Wednesday, uh, up to Wednesday, if anybody would be interested in doing some extra babysitting, uh, baby court could, could use some, a friend uh, that would uh, uh, come over and spend some time so that they can, uh, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, so that they can pack up and get ready for loading and all that. So if you have some free time, you'd be interested in that. Would you please see them? And then on Wednesday, we're going to, to help the elders move. So anyone who can come in Wednesday. What time do you have the truck? Should I pick up the truck at 9? 9 o'clock. So How fast are you going to be at picking up the truck? Uh, I'll be there by, by 10. Okay, so you ready to start about 10? About 10. Okay, so about 10 o'clock we'll start. And guys, if you can come, if you're off that day or if you uh, have a, a little break, 10 o'clock we'll start uh, moving the Eldridge's, loading up their truck and, and going from there. Pretty close to 10. And uh, I believe that I was told by um, the, the landlord, I think I heard this, that she's going to provide um, uh, sloppy joes, uh, so lunch will be provided. Okay, um, so I think that's what I heard. So lunch will be provided, and um, that's on Wednesday. We'll start at ten o'clock. Okay, and uh, <coughs> corrections. Make sure you see. Me. We are going to do a dedication service at the end of the day, like I told, told you. A lot of stuff going. On. Dedication service today. For the elders going out, uh, most likely working in uh, ministry in Michigan, but if not, uh, doing something in missions, and we're going to send them out with uh, prayer and concern for them, and that we'll do that at the end of the service today. Don't let me, in the midst of doing so many things, forget that or skip over it, all right? Um, so keep, keep me on track there. And then you notice also, uh, Brittany has already left. Um, have we had any word from her? On her way now to Australia. Okay. On her way to Australia already. And so that's great. So be in prayer for her and, uh, and you know, for her safety and that she'll have a lot of fun and for spiritual growth and those things. And let's pray for Brittany with that. And then don't forget the church picnic at the Fears of Afar. Um, also, uh, don't forget uh, Vacation Bible School coming up. And uh, on July 5th, we have Vacation Bible School there, July 5th through 10th. On July 5th, we'll also have someone from history coming. Um, that's my brother doing a history lesson for you. So we encourage you uh, to be prepared for that as well. And then you've got some BBS decorating dates down there. And congratulations to Tim Beers. You can't be that old. No way. Graduating? What, from junior high? <laughs> oh, boy. I'm getting old fast. <laughs> wow. Okay, um, so those are the announcements that, that we have. Um, please, come tonight. I, I know you have family things, but if you want to just come and have some fellowship with us, if you don't have to go out of town, we'd love to have you. Yes, ma'am. request Ms. Joyce's kidneys with family. Um, the doctor would specialist can't see her for more than a month. She's having some trouble. Miss Joyce is having some trouble with her kidneys, and um, she's trying to get into those that can help her and uh, see see what they can do about it. Not necessarily a totally unexpected thing with what she deals with, but it is something that needs to be managed, or it could cause a lot of other trouble. So, All right. Okay, um, Miss Marlene did very well in uh, her treatment on the 23rd, <coughs> yesterday, no, Friday. Um, did very well in her treatment. And um, in fact, they, they were very pleased with what they saw from the first treatment. And then she did this one, and they shouldn't be doing any more chemo for quite a while with her. Um, so she's real excited. And she said she'll be here to see you next week. And that was uh, what she said. She'll be here to see you next week. So. Um, 
let's continue to pray for her that she feels okay, that she doesn't have any of the stomach upsetness and all that that comes from getting and dealing with the chemo, and uh, pray for her complete healing. All right? Have I forgot any other announcements or prayer requests? <coughs> All right, let's have our gentlemen come forward at this time and take up our offering. John, would you take us before the throne? Yes, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the wonderful weather, Lord, and we count it a blessing to be in your house this morning. Lord, we thank you for the, the building that you provided for us and for everyone that out today, Lord. We pray for those of our number that could not be with us, Lord, whether traveling or ill, and uh, we think especially of, of Miss Marlene and Miss Joyce, Lord, that you would be with them and just lay a healing hand upon them and, and be with the doctors and give them wisdom as they treat them, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, now for this opportunity to give back a portion of that that you have provided. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Even more than that, 
but all of these are from your church. People that you sit next to on a regular basis. I'm sad to say that four of those uh, men that we have just mentioned are no longer with us. They have passed into glory. And so we can't ask them anymore about their story and show them the honor they deserve. We can't tell them how much we appreciate what they've done and what they've set up for us in our freedom. But I'll tell you this. There is no greater moment than to take just a second, even here in church, and say thank you. Because there are many countries where the church is underground. They have to hide. They do not get the privilege to meet like we do and be loud with our instruments and play and sing to our heart's content for hours on end if we want. And we get that because of the freedom of men like this and those who have gone on before us that are here in my folder. If you'd like to read through some of the things that they've said over the years, I have them for you. I try to keep every one. So we have that as a history of the, the Church of Frizzleburg. Well, Eric, by the way, is there anyone else who's sitting down? I know I know that Miss Dolores is sitting down there and she doesn't feel like she can stretch up. And I'll say for her, she, she's FBI agent Dolores. Um, she'll lock you up and... Uh, uh, no, she was a secretary with the FBI. So uh, Miss Dolores did that for quite a few years and her husband as well um, as the fingerprint expert. Um, but is there anyone else who's sitting down who says, I'm, I'm too, I don't, I don't like emphasizing that or getting up and that kind of thing. But you, just where you are, I won't make you come up. But we really like that. All right, Eric, would you start? Tell us your name and, and what you've done. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want a long 20-minute story from each of you. Um, I, I want you to tell me who you are and, and what you've done, like police and that kind of stuff. Okay, go ahead. My name is Eric Helm. I do as little as possible. <laughs> the police Department from 1994 through 2009. I currently work in a civilian capacity with the Attorney General of Pennsylvania. I am Jerry Hawkins, a Sergeant in the Marine Corps. I'm a 50 year volunteer fund. I'm Bill Verweiger. I was in the United States Air Force from 1966 to 1970. I'm Tim Heffler. I was in the Maryland National Guard. Most important thing I guess I did was go to Battle of College Park when they arrived to get your point off and we tried to. I'm Greta Fishman. I served in a Dutch Army from 54 to 56. John Meisler served in the Navy in uh, 69 through 72. Uh, I asked Don if he would say some extra because we don't know if Don will be here next year uh, because his house is for sale and he's got a plan, but I don't think you've ever emphasized him. So I said, tell me a little bit more about yourself when we get to you, okay? Well, there's not a whole lot more to tell. Uh, it was Vietnam era that everybody that was being drafted was going to Vietnam. Stepped right up and jumped into the Navy when I had the opportunity. Um, didn't have a big glorious, um, you know, part in things, but uh, I was in a naval fighter squadron and uh, I did a lot of paperwork uh, that enabled those that did have to fly to do that. Uh, when I got out in uh, April of '72. Very shortly thereafter, in June, left for Vietnam. Um, fast forward a couple of years after that, I met a young fellow, uh, a young fellow, same age as me. He was young then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I met him in night school, and he looked at me and he says, Have you ever in the Navy? Yeah. He says, At Oceana? And I said, Yeah. He was in the squadron with me, and he told me about the people. It was an interesting experience, I've said many times. I would never go back and do it again.
nine days back in 68. I think you two need to talk to each other. <laughs> so uh, let's give these gentlemen a round of applause. service for the FBI and her husband and so forth, but uh, yes. Um, and and uh, now, one, one more thing before we have these gentlemen sit down in our desire to honor those. If you are here and you have a, a family member who is currently uh, serving in the armed forces or in protective services, again, police, FBI, uh, so forth, um, uh, you know, in, in uh, paramedics, those type of things. Would you please stand? If you have a family member uh, that is in those things, would you please stand? Okay. If you um, have a uh, family member who, yes, Miss Jean should be standing, but she doesn't know it. She's got a grandson that's uh, in, in the armed forces. Matthew. Is he out now? Well, that counts enough. <laughs> All right. Um, if you have, uh, uh, if you have had someone who served in the past in your family in uh, the armed forces, would you please stand as well? Don't forget, when I'm saying armed forces, I mean protective services. Those who also protect us at home, I think, deserve just as much honor. Our police officers, our firemen, and, and so forth, as uh, those who go abroad. And it's becoming just as much a war zone, it seems like, here lately as well. All right. Um, if you have, at some time or another, been one of those who had to work in the factory uh, during wartime in order to provide things, or in the bean fields, would you also stand? Do you help with the war cause? Would you also stand? Stand up taller, Ms. Tom. That's what the uh, body wants you to do. All right, let's give all of these a round of applause. Thank you. You may be seated. And again, we honor all of you. We think, and as you'll hear in the message today, one of the greatest things that we can do is not only remember, but think on, meditate, talk about these things. Um, it, it is not enough for you to, to see a, a, a military or a police officer. Um, as we were uh, riding down the road in Baltimore with the ensemble, and all the police officers that are there trying to keep the stadium safe and everything, I made sure specifically at this time that we wound down the window every time one was anywhere near me that, that could hear me and told them I appreciated what they were doing. Every time I walked past one, I, because they need to hear that. They need to be told that we appreciate them. Because right now, they don't feel so appreciated. Um, our military the same. They don't feel so appreciated. We need to tell them how much we love them and how much we appreciate their sacrifices. You know, I, I get to do what I do. Because someone else volunteered. And I need to re remember that. And never forget it. Because that means that my life needs to be spent in a way that's worthy of that as well. I shouldn't just waste it. I should take advantage of the opportunity I am given. So don't forget that. Okay, at this time the choir is going to come and sing in honor of our men uh, a special song that we've picked out for them. I should say men and women in honor of our main women. I don't mean to emphasize men and men.
As they come down, the band can come up for their last song. A lot of transition today.
Um, now, I don't know why I have my uh, hymn book up here like it's going to be my Bible for me to open. It's not my Bible for me to open. Psalm 77. Psalm 70. I have no idea why I'm holding the hymn book like I'm going to open it like the Bible. Psalm 77. I'm going to jump away for one day, uh, one Sunday from um, uh, the First John. And the reason being is that I, uh, I don't want to um, uh, reiterate last week's message, which was being willing to lay down your life for a friend, which is where we would be if we tried to do First John again. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. We're going to do a different one about a remembrance, and we'll come back and finish up the love and the responsibility to love. We'll finish up that in the next um, uh, Sunday's message, okay? But as you look here with me at Psalm 77, the first thing I'd like to point out to you is to the chief musician, to Jonathan, a psalm of Asaph. So this is not the typical psalm of David, okay? It's a psalm of Asaph. That's the first thing I'd like to point out to you. I'd also like for you to do a quick scan with me. We're not going to read the whole chapter um, because of, of time constraints today and, and our desire to to uh, give you the real message and not dwell on other things, would you please just look down there through this passage with me and see the word uh, remember, meditate, or any variation of such things. Remember, meditate, uh, verse 3 has one, right? Where else? Verse 6 has one, okay, where else? 6 has 2. 6 has 2, correct. Where else? 11. 10. 10 and 11. Where else? 12. Where else? See any more? But overall, here's what I want you to get. The theme of this psalm is remembrance. You get that? The theme of this psalm is remembrance. I mean, you, you hear all the verses that have it in it. Now, what I want to do is I want to teach you a little bit about what it means to remember. At least remember in this way that, that we're going to look at here today, which I think is a very appropriate thought. As we think on Memorial Day, which, what's the purpose of a memorial? To remember. We have this day not so everybody can get off and have a day off from work and be able to do whatever they want and, and have their parties and their picnics. That's not why we have this day. We have this day to remember those who have sacrificed their lives for us, for our benefit. And, and it's very behooving to us. It's very good for us if we keep that in mind and, and make sure that we remember and think on those who have gone on before that provide us this freedom. This verse is going to teach us a little bit about it. We're going to start with verse 10. We're going to go down through verse 15. One little section. I'm not going to preach the whole psalm. I don't think that would be uh, appropriate for the day unless you want me to go all the way to this afternoon and skip the, the picnics that you're all going to, the cookouts, whatever else. Okay? I'll be glad to do that if you want. But, uh, verse 10. And I said, this is my infirmity. Okay? So Asaph is starting out with, I have a problem, a burden and infirmity. You can read earlier uh, what, what that might entail, what the burden might be. But in essence, it's that it, it's a struggle for him to keep his right perspective with God. It's a struggle for him to, to enjoy the blessings of God. And, and it's an infirmity. It's a, it's a weakness. By the way, this word infirmity carries the idea of wound. It carries the idea of, of um, uh, not just infirmity. Uh, it's translated most the word wound. Uh, but it carries many other ideas. By the way, I thought it was absolutely hilarious when looking this up. Uh, one of the, the uh, definitions of this word infirmity is playing the flute. Did you hear that? Playing the flute. The flute wounds me? I, I don't know. What, what, what is that? I, I have no idea. I just sat there and laughed when I looked at that. Playing the flute. That's soothing. So if you're ill, you play the flute. Maybe play the flute to it, take care of it. I don't know. I, anyways, that was just a little side note. I noticed in the, in the, in the Hebrew when you're looking at it, um, and playing the flute is, is one of the things that this word can refer to and mean. 
Um, but it, it's the idea of, of a wound or a problem, a burden, something that is heavy on, okay? So he has this problem. Now, what does he do with a problem, okay? You and I have problems today. If you're like me, you don't like a lot of the things and choices we're making overall as a country. You don't like the things that we see, for instance, down in Baltimore and the way things are going. You don't like these attitudes and problems. You don't like the, the lack of respect for each other. You don't like the way that, that people don't respect uh, human life in general. You don't like the way that we, we, we skip over and, and act like we're dealing with issues but never really do. You don't like these things. And it bothers you. And if it bothers you, in essence, you have a wound. And it hurts. I mean, I don't know about you. I, there, there's a mixture. When I watch the riots as they begin, there's a mixture of anger and, and a horrible letdown put together. Anger and a horrible letdown put at the same time. It's not all anger. It's also some feeling terrible for what's happening. For the way that our, our state is being looked at. For, for the things that we're doing and how we're reacting to stuff. And of course, because of all the work I do with police officers, for our police officers. <laughs> what might happen with them. It's heavy on me. Okay, so what do we do about this? Well, the Bible takes us through a little remembrance test here. And this is what we should do. Number one. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. So what does Asaph, with his infirmity, say he's going to do to deal with the problem? Go ahead and answer up. I know this isn't Bible study time, but what's he say? What's he say he's going to do? He's going to remember what? The years of God's guiding them, His right hand, His hand being upon them and doing with them and, and teaching them and taking them. And, okay? You know, if we would just take the time and we're in the midst of a problem, a burden, to remember this way, do you think things would go a little easier? Okay? In our modern day, when we're thinking back about those who have, who have volunteered so much for us, do you think that we would have a, a different attitude if our first thought was not this is my country and I want it my way. But instead, Lord, thank you for what you've given to me and help me to make this country better and help me to remember how your hand has been behind this country all these years. Do you think it would change the way we believe God can do something about the problems and fix things? Do you think it would? If we believed that God's hand in the past was on us and we focused on that. I mean... How many of us really believe that, 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 that God uh, should have given us the victory in Delaware with George Washington crossing the river, or given us the victory uh, later on at, at Yorktown? Did we really believe that we could beat the best army in the world? How did that happen? Because God's hand was there and we saw it. Okay, We can look back, as I mentioned last week, into the Civil War. And we see one of the greatest generals ever, a man loved by both sides, respected highly. And he dies, shot in battle, not by the other team, but by his own men. Can we see the hand of God guiding and protecting this country? How about, how about the unification that results from a, a southern sympathizer killing the president soon after the end of the war. Can we see God's hand? You took a man that might have been, throughout all of history, considered to be, I think he was a great president, but he might have been considered by many because of the fact that he was in charge during the Civil War, one of the worst presidents ever. But because he died at the end of the war, as a result of the war, it unified the country, and it took some of those who were on the south and who were having problems and changed their attitude. Aren't you glad that God's in control and had his hand on this country? Or how about as we storm the beaches in Normandy or Iwo Jima, you were going against the greatest 
general in World War II. Yes, I did say that. The greatest general in World War II. His name was Rommel. No one did tactics like he did. He was amazing. But you know what? God had already put a chink in the man's armor because he was thinking to himself, some of this stuff that we're doing, I don't like. And soon after, he participates in an assassination attempt. He does. Hitler sleeps. <coughs> he can't call up the tanks he needs because he's under orders that he can't do it without Hitler. God's hand. Look, that's the idea of the verse. When I go through infirmity, shouldn't I remember the past when God's hand did something miraculous and saved the day? Shouldn't I remember what God's doing? Look at the next verse. It says, um, I will remember the works of the Lord. I will think about what He's done. Again, when we get into trouble, if our focus is on what's here and now and how he's let me down, I promise you folks, we're not going to have the right attitude. But if we start to focus on, I remember what good things God's done for me. I promise you, it'll be much easier to go through that infirmity. It'll bring you greater joy and you'll be able to see in faith what God's truly doing. Because one says, I will remember the wonders of old. Not just things he's done in my day and, and just before my day, but all the way back. You think about the many things he's done in this country. Pilgrim's land on, on, a, on a, a place where they weren't supposed to be and happen to run into an Indian who, who doesn't have a real tribe anymore, who happens to speak their language, who happens to like and respect foreigners, Europeans, who happens to say, I want to be their friend and teach them how to do all this. Who have, come on now. Hand, hand God, can we see it? Can we see what God's done, the wonders? It should encourage us. Folks, when we're thinking back about those who honored and served us in wartime and in peacetime, protecting us, I think we do the same thing. We don't want to give them the same credit as God, but I think we do the same thing. We realize what their hand, what a hand they had in our protection, and what God used them to do, and we honor them for that. We remember their works. We remember that they were at Pearl Harbor and Iwo Jima. We remember that they, that they were there in, in, in the Battle of Midway. We remember these things. And as you learn here in a few minutes, we talk about them constantly. I don't think we do enough of that here in this country. I don't. In many ways, we make those who served in military time feel embarrassed. Our, our media has gotten to the place to where they treat them like they're, they're secondhand criminals, baby killers, and so forth. It's a shame. Go on and we see that in the next one it says, I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. The word here for meditate is not the meditate as in chew the, the cud. You know, the cow, he puts it in a thingy and brings it back out. That's not this word. The word here is the idea of, of groaning, mumbling, talking to oneself. In other words, it's meditating on something to the extent that it's controlling your every thought. So that, as you walk around, you appear to others to be so in thought about something. And if they got close, they could hear you mumbling about. What? Here? What? What? The work of the Lord. And all is doing. Christians, I think we need to remember what remembering really means now. And, and that means to, to take and make it a priority. To think back on these things. To speak up about them. 
I didn't tell you this, but the word remembrance carries the idea of to announce as if in a courtroom. All rise, the honorable judge. Would so-and-so please come forth? That's the idea of remember here. Announce in such a way. God wants us to remember Him that way. And I think it's a good pattern for us to see how to remember others. And how does He want us to remember? As we've seen. Okay, remember the works of His hand. Remember the works that He's done. Remember His wonders of old. Remember and meditate on them. Uh, babble about them all the time. Thinking about them so much that it's always on your thoughts and, your, and what you're saying. And talk of His doings everywhere you go. Uh, verse 13. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Lord, your place is a special place. And who is like our God? Who else is on the throne is really the question. Is there anyone else on the throne besides you? Folks, when we say that to ourselves, it gives us the opportunity to become Bonhoeffer. Or other such great people. Corey Tin Moon. It becomes easy for us to do the impossible. Because we're not focused on the infirmity anymore. The wound, the problem. But instead we're praising God for the mighty things He's done. And remembering it. So that we can see in the midst of this problem, He will be mighty too. His works will be true as well. See, that's how we get ourselves in trouble. When we lose focus, we're like Peter. We see that God's walking on the water. We step out and we say, I'd like to walk on the water too. God says, sure, come on out. But as soon as things start happening around us and the boil happens in the water, we take our eyes off of God and that moment we fade. We falter. We sink. Folks, that's exactly what happens in your daily lives. When you take your focus off of God, you fade. So, when you have an infirmity, the idea is put your focus totally on God and allow Him to teach you to walk on the water. But that's not where we typically go. We don't say, God, you're in your sanctuary, you're on your throne, you have a special place in my heart. And I'm going to focus on that right now because life's a little tough. We tend to say, how unfair of you, God. And not remember the blessings that He's given. We tend to say, that hurts me, God. And not say, it's so worth it for what you're going to do in the end. God wants us to be a people who can focus on Him and His works. Verse 14, Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Has God shown his strength, that's the idea, over and over again to us in our own lifetime and in lifetimes past? We recently heard during the Hezbollah throwing uh, uh, you know, those special missiles at, at, at um, Israel that the, there was a, a breakdown in the, the wall in their special shield system that they had. And nothing gets through that shield. But they had a problem. They couldn't shoot down the missile. And they shot at it two different times. The third time they missed again. And the word went out. Prepare. We've got a problem. We cannot stop it. We've done all of our measures. And the unthinkable is happening. The bomb is on the way. It's going to land in this sector of the city. Evacuate as many as we can before it hits. We've got two minutes. Mobilize. Mobilize. And yet word comes from Israel that a man who is not a believer in my God says, and out of nowhere, a great wind came and blew that missile off target and right into the sea. There must be a God out there somewhere, he says. Folks, I could give you story after story of this, and so should you about your very own life. I can't tell you the number of times that God has done 
something amazing and miraculous at just that perfect time. And sometimes it's not nearly as big as other people would think when I describe it. But it sure is big to me. For instance, I still remember a, a girl that sat in the back of one of my choirs when I went to Bob Jones. I was working five days a week, uh, getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I had a roommate um, who called me lazy and wouldn't let me go to bed before 11.30 at night at any time. Had a bad movie. Very bad. Um, I was exhausted. Exhausted to the point to where I learned all kinds of tricks about how to keep myself from being caught from sleeping in class. In classes that I could sleep in. As in holding my feet off the, uh, off the floor the entire time. That hurts. But it keeps you away. Um, as in holding my pencil up because my pencil would fall before my head fell. Many different things. During that time when I was at my most discouraged, I get a little note in a box from a girl whose parents don't support her at all, who really didn't have a lot of friends, if you know what I'm talking about, who said, I noticed you were tired and you looked worn out, exhausted. Like you might not make it. There's two dollars. Would you please go to the snack shack, buy yourself a milkshake, and sit there and rest for just a few minutes? God's awesome. God is beyond what we could ever expect. Have you seen all the wonders He's done for you? Remember those, and the infirmities are not that big a deal. They don't hurt so bad. Goes on and says, um, Thou art a God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength. He's made it known to us. We've seen it. In verse 15, our final verse says, Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. With thine arm you redeemed your people. Now look, I realize this is a, a, a psalm written directly to the Hebrews, to the Jews, to the Israelites, but I just want to tell you something. I have seen many times where God, with His own arm, has redeemed you. And has redeemed you. I've witnessed as God's taken uh, this little problem or that little problem and turned it into an amazing blessing over and over and over again. Folks, our infirmities are so big because we let them be so big. Because we refuse to focus on the right thing. Our God in heaven and all of his might. And all that he's done for us. When we focus on him, when we remember the right way, we will meditate, which means that you want it and talk about it constantly, which also means we will be broadcasting it. Praise the Lord for what He's done. Folks, I, I know that we're talking about the Lord, but again, I think this is a great pattern for how we deal with our veterans and those who serve us. We should not just ride by them or stand next to them in the line at, at Walmart and never say a word. We should say, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, ma'am. Thank you for serving. If you have the ability, you should say, young man, I'll buy you coffee. You should. I, I recognize that you might say they have more money than I do, and that might be true, but some of us need to make a difference in the lives of these people by saying, we know what you're doing. We know your sacrifice. And oh, if we would do that spiritually, what a difference it would be in our lives. If we'd stand up and thank God and proclaim and mutter about him and murmur constantly in our hearts, not murmur in a bad way, but constantly mumbling. If we would do that, be so blessed. The infirmities would seem so small. I'd like you to bow your heads, close your eyes for just a moment.
you were here today and you say, Pastor Andrew, I've been so focused on what I feel is wrong and what God has done wrong that I've never accepted Jesus as my Savior, but I'd like to do that today. I'd like to talk to someone about it. Would you raise your hand right where you are? I'd like to accept Jesus. Christians, as we sit here together, this shouldn't be a step on your toes message. It should be one of encouragement, but one that should remind us to up our desire to praise God and to be thankful in the midst of problems and struggles, to focus on God and to make it that our priority and our goal. What a blessing we will receive when we do that. Will you tell God that that's your desire? To be more thankful, more grateful, to remember and meditate, to constantly be mumbling and having the thoughts of what He's done for you on your heart and your tongue. Let's take our hymn books. Let's stand together and let's sing. The 96. Standing together and singing. We thank you also for the library and what it means to us that we can encourage good Christian reading. 
Uh, Lord, many times our, our own local libraries don't carry these books, so we're only a few of them. We can't find a whole series. And, but we thank you for the blessing that you've given to us for this. We thank you for uh, the involvement and in, in encouragement that they've given to so many of our people. As a, a young couple that has come in and, and, and stepped right in and, and done what they could with the gifts that you've given them. We thank you for them. Lord, we do pray for their upcoming ministry. We thank you for the blessing that you've given to each of us that we've had a chance uh, to impart a little bit in, in David and Amanda's life. And uh, Lord, we pray that you would just bless them in what's to come. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of uh, having David and Amanda and Cora with us for this time, Lord, that they've been here with us. We thank you uh, the day, um, that you sent them along to us, Lord, uh, that we could get to know them better. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with them as they go out, help them in the decisions that they make, open doors for them, Lord. We know that you open doors and you lead us in the things that you would have us do, Lord. And pray that they would continue to look to you for guidance and that you would Throw the doors open wide and, and show them where you would have them go, Lord. And we just thank you for their willingness to go out and serve you. And pray, Lord, that you would be with them each step of the way. Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, the elders have come to us as two and will leave as three. We pray, Lord, that there are many other things that, uh, and uh, memories that they will take also, that they are richer for their time for having been with us. We remember uh, all of Amanda's humor and Inspector Gadget and uh, many ways he has served us uh, and served among us. We thank you, Lord, for the model of faithfulness that they have been and, and how much we needed that and the encouraging things that we have received from them. We pray, Lord, that uh, the little time with us will be big in their memories, that you will uh, strengthen them Give them patience as they go forward, because your ways are not our ways, and sometimes uh, we're not too patient to do things your way. And we pray, Lord, you'll help them grow with that, uh, that they will see that your hand of blessing has never left them, it's always been there. We thank you, Lord, for what they have meant to us, and we trust, Lord, that even though a week or so from now I won't be able to physically hold his hand, I pray, Lord, that the uh, the bond will still be there, and that uh, the elders will not truly have left our church. We ask, Lord, that uh, you go before them, and make that way clear, make the way clear in the hearts of those who have received them, and they will uh, love this couple as we have loved them. We trust, Lord, for you to take care of them. 